This man's entire family were killed in a terrible crash. Then police found out the senseless reason. For Eddie Schmidt, July 24, 2017 may have seemed like just another regular day. It certainly began pretty benignly, with his pregnant wife Lindsay shuttling all three of their young sons into her car in order to take them to Bible camp. And after Lindsay had gone through the routine of getting them ready for the journey, she finally hopped into the driver's seat. The mom-to-be's drive through rural Illinois past sweeping cornfields and brought the young family to intersections quiet enough to run on stop signs alone. No stoplights needed. These clear roadways may have been the last place in which Lindsay had thought she'd lose her life. But by 8.30 a.m. on that Monday, Lindsay, her unborn child, and her 18-month-old son would be dead. Meanwhile, her two eldest sons, aged four and six, would be left gravely ill in the hospital, and Ed Schmidt would be left to wonder what happened to the perfect family that he had been building with the love of his life. Eddie and Lindsay Schmidt had been married in 2008, and although they had swiftly jumped into parenthood, they still seemed to be very much in love. Indeed, in 2016, Lindsay wrote on a Facebook post to this effect on the day of the couple's wedding anniversary. It said, I couldn't have dreamed of a better partner to spend the rest of my life with. I love this man more and more every day. And the Schmidts also shared their affection with three little ones, Owen, born October 8, 2010, Weston, born March 22, 2013, and Caleb, who came into the world on December 2, 2015. In the summer of 2017, moreover, Lindsay was four months pregnant with the couple's fourth child. And Scott Sievert, the principal at Owens Elementary School, could only sing the Schmidt's praises. They were a wonderful, loving family, he told the Chicago Tribune in July 2017. They were very active in the church and here at school. Lindsay was always looking for an opportunity to serve, he added. And serve she did. The 29-year-old had dedicated herself to her church, leading a group there to bring together other moms of young kids. She even volunteered as a room parent at her son's school, Illinois Lutheran Elementary. Reverend Frank Italiano would say in a service dedicated to the Schmitz at Trinity Lutheran Church. Meanwhile, Sievert remembered Owen, the eldest of the Schmidt children, as a hard-working kindergartner. Owen always had a smile on his face, the principal revealed to the Chicago Tribune. That upcoming school year would have seen Owen begin first grade. Second-born Weston, meanwhile, was due to start preschool at Illinois Lutheran Elementary. But none of that would come to pass. On that Monday morning in July, Lindsay and her kids piled into their 2014 Subaru Outback on the way to Bible Camp. Then, their early morning commute took them northbound to Yates Avenue and toward an intersection with Corning in their small town home of Beecher, Illinois. And tragically, it would be there that another driver would make a fatal mistake that would cost so many young lives. Sean Wolf, a 25-year-old who also hailed from Beecher, blew through a stop sign in his 2002 Chevy S10 pickup truck. As a consequence, he smashed into the driver's side of Lindsay's Subaru. And the impact of the crash was so great that her vehicle was sent canneering from the road and into a peaceful, picturesque cornfield. By the time the authorities arrived on the scene, moreover, they discovered the unimaginable. The pregnant, 29-year-old wife and mother was dead. So too was her youngest son, Caleb, just four months shy of his second birthday. Owen and Weston, meanwhile, were barely clinging to life. On July 26th, however, Weston died at the hospital. He was only four years old, and while Weston's elder brother was on life support at the time of his passing, Owen would only hang on for a few more hours after that. At 2.39 a.m. on July 27th, he too passed away. Upon hearing the horrible news, the Beecher community immediately sprang into action, holding candlelight vigils, creating a roadside memorial, and raising money for the bereaved widower. It's like nothing I have ever experienced, said Reverend Italiano, of the support that Eddie and his relatives received. However, neither Eddie nor any of his family members attended the public events in memory of Lindsay and the kids. The family is hurting, Italiano said, by the way of explaining their absence. Making matters worse, Wolf, the driver who had struck the Schmitz, walked away from the scene nearly unscathed. And though he did suffer a laceration to his arm that required surgery, that was obviously nothing compared to what had happened to Lindsay, Owen, Weston, and Caleb. On top of that, the 25-year-old who drove the pickup truck was only given a citation on the day of the fatal crash. Authorities issued the ticket for Wolf's failure to stop at a stop sign, but no further charges were immediately filed. 
On August 2nd, moreover, all charges against him were dropped. Yet, while that may seem outrageous, it was actually a strategic move by investigators and prosecutors in the case. If they went ahead with the initial citation charges, they would have been at risk of a double jeopardy situation if they discovered that Wolf was guilty of a more serious offense. Double jeopardy bars authorities from trying a suspect twice for the same alleged crime. But the county sheriff kept the investigation open in order to look into Wolf's state at the time of the crash. And just 20 days after the authorities had let Wolf off the hook, they uncovered startling new evidence that led to Wolf being called in to face new charges. Specifically, police announced on August 22nd that Wolf had been speeding 20 miles over the 55 mile an hour limit enforced on the stretch of road where he hit the Schmitz. His speed may have been a part of the reason he missed the stop sign, in fact. The police also said that Wolf had been cleared of any drug or alcohol use. They were unable to comment, however, on whether he had been texting behind the wheel. Even so, they still had enough evidence to charge Wolf with 16 counts of reckless homicide in the crash. And if he is found guilty on all counts, he'll spend up to 10 years in jail. For Eddie Schmidt, though, these charges are no substitute for the family he lost so swiftly and unexpectedly, but he may nevertheless have received some comfort from Reverend Italiano, who addressed Eddie personally at the family's funeral service. Specifically, Italiano attempted to help the young widower to work through his unimaginable grief with these words. Eddie, said the Reverend, pausing as he came overwhelmed with emotion, you told me that you were blessed to have Lindsay in your life. You were blessed to have these children, and you know what, Eddie? You were a blessing to them, too.